Hey, what's going on, Internet? It's Tuesday. It's time for a new episode of Lons TV. I want to do a review of the science fiction comedy Paul from uh, Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. It's in theaters now. I was going to review it on This Week in Movies. But before I do that, um, I want to talk a little bit about the Rebecca Black thing. I can't believe this is still going on, honestly. Uh, for those of you who are not on the Internet ever except to watch my show, and I, I get it. Uh, Rebecca Black is this 13-year-old girl, and as a birthday present, her parents got her the, a company to, like, make this fake music video. I guess it was a real music video, but they, they have a song. It's really cheesy. It's called Friday. Uh, and then, you know, she and all her friends, they, like, acted in this video, and they put it together and made it look like a contemporary music video and auto-tuned the hell out of her voice. And, you know, it got on YouTube, and it made the rounds, and it's such a silly song, and it's so kind of dumb uh, that, that it really took off and, and it sort of captured the popular imagination. I actually have a theory about why everybody loves to hate this particular song, because there's so many, like, bad, cheesy, random songs. I think this is, it's, like, just dumb enough that we can all mutually agree. Nobody likes it sincerely. We can all agree that it's ironic and that it works as parody and we can laugh at it. And that it lets us admit how stupid all mass popular culture is, like how vacuous all of popular music has become. Because you can't just make these same jokes about Kesha or Justin Bieber or Britney or Lady Gaga. It makes people feel bad because they like those artists. Like, especially Lady Gaga. Like, if you insult Lady Gaga, you get the little monsters, like, come out of the war work and they can't stand it. It's like a personal slight because they take that bullcrap so seriously. So the great thing about Rebecca Black is it lets us all sort of mutually admit that pop music is just ridiculously stupid now, but without anybody's specific feelings being hurt, except this young girl, Rebecca Black. I think you have to sort of feel bad for her, like anybody who becomes the center of one of these, like, meme things, like Chris Crocker, although he, he sort of did it, more brought it on himself, I guess, but like Star Wars Kid or Winnebago Man, or these people who really don't want this level of infamy and a sort of thrust on them. I mean, I'm sure it's gonna, it's gonna either die out, or she's gonna participate in it and keep it going, because she likes it, and either way, it's sort of a happy ending. So I, I really don't think this is going to, like, destroy her life or anything. Um, I do also think people are really overreacting in the, um, like, every time something like this happens, or Jersey Shore, or, like, that, you know, regular schmoes, or even, like, stupid, untalented people in the case of, like, Jersey Shore become famous, you always get these cultural critiques that it's, like, the death of popular culture, or we're in this, like, Roman, you know, Roman Colosseum style, like, oh, it's the end of civilization, like, look who we elevate to be our celebrities now, like, these young girls who can't even sing and just imitate popular music, or, like, these, these morons from Jersey who just like to get drunk and live in this beach house. And, uh, to that I say grow up. Like, the whole point, I think, of celebrity in America now is just that we like having celebrities. It doesn't matter how they become a celebrity. Uh, you know, like the Kardashians and the Jersey Shore people, like, people just like having them and following them, and it's something to talk about. It's something to, like, fill time, and that in itself is entertainment. Like, all these gossip websites and magazines, like, that's a platform, and we need entertainment, we need content for that platform, and I think it really does matter less than people think what specifically that content is. I think it's just that content that, that people like, that they just want to follow something, and it doesn't matter who. So I, I think there's plenty of room for, like, the talented people, like, people who become famous because they're actually, like, really good at, like, a, an artistic craft, or really notable, or they're great athletes or something. We have plenty of those. I think there's room too for people who just like luck into it and end up being famous and people can then obsess about them just because it's somebody we're all sort of familiar with like I don't think Rebecca Black is like taking a spot that would otherwise otherwise go to like a brilliant oncologist or something and now we're not going to cure cancer because Rebecca Black became famous and and you you read that stuff all the time like it's this major serious issue like what can we learn from the celebrity of Rebecca Black and it's like we can learn absolutely nothing other than she did like a stupid song on YouTube that everybody enjoyed one week and uh, she'll either decide to run with it and release another stupid song and do, like, the Tay Zonday thing where she'll have a different, like, stupid song every month or, or great song. I mean, you know, if you're a Tay Zonday fan. Uh, uh, or, you know, she'll fade into obscurity like so many other memes before her. Uh, you know, like Antoine Dodson should have done and, and didn't. And now he's, like, 
in clubs or what. I don't know what he's doing. Um, anyway, and it got everybody's mind off the Charlie Sheen idiocy. So it was not a total loss. Um, okay, moving on. I'm, I'm losing daylight fast. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my review of Paul now. Uh, and try to get it out before you can't see me anymore at all. Uh, this, the movie, of course, it's, it's very much like uh, Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead, which were the movies that came before it, from the writing, acting team of Nick Frost and Simon Pegg. Uh, they, they usually worked with Edgar Wright. He was the director of those other two movies. He did not work on Paul because he went and did uh, Scott Pilgrim, which was great last year. Uh, so this was actually done by Greg Matola, 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 I think it was Matola, who directed Superbad. Uh, but it's very much in the style of Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. Like, Shaun of the Dead is like the sort of deadpan, wacky send-up of zombie movies. And then you had Hot Fudge, which was the Hot Fuzz. Not Hot Fudge, although that sounds delicious. Hot Fuzz, which was the sort of wacky, deadpan send-up of, like, cop movies and 80s cop movies especially, and even some Michael Bay stuff in there. And then you have Paul, which is clearly the, the same, like, the deadpan, wacky send-up of 80s sci-fi especially like Steven Spielberg movies, like particularly things like E.T., Close Encounters. But also, I mean, it mixes a lot of different, like especially 80s science fiction sort of concepts and jokes and references in there, much like the other two. If you like those other two movies from this group, there is absolutely no reason you would not like this one. It is right in the same style. I think all of them are funny. I actually think they, they sort of get progressively a little bit better. Like, I didn't love Shaun of the Dead. I thought it had moments, but I don't know. It, it had gaps for me that, that didn't really work, weren't very funny. And I thought that it, it was not really successful as a horror film. So it sort of was in this weird in-between place. I get why people really like it. I enjoy it. I don't think it's a bad movie by any stretch, but I didn't love it. I really liked Hot Fuzz. That one I thought really connected. It was a little long. This one sort of hits it just right. Um, it's, it's really, like, canny. It's really clever. And even when it's making, like, a lot of references to old films, which I sometimes find cheesy, it sort of does it with a light enough touch that even if it, you, even if you don't get any of the references, I think you would still enjoy the movie just because it's got so much energy and it's funny and it's witty and it just moves. It trucks really well. Um... You know, and, and, and the best part about these sorts of homages, the ones they did with Edgar Wright and then this one as well, is, is they're so affectionate. that It's not a mean-spirited send-up. It's not just a dumb recreation. It's a real, it's sort of an homage. It's an ode to these movies. Like, these are, they're making these films playing on genres that they clearly love. And, and so I, as a person who also loves a lot of these kinds of movies, you sort of can't help but be charmed by it. I think. Um, this one has, you know, tons and tons of, of allusions and references. It also has a great extended cast. I mean, you've got Peg and Frost, and they play uh, these buddies these, from England, uh, and they're on this road trip across America looking at alien, like, places where there's been alien sightings, and then they meet Paul, who's voiced by Seth Rogen, who is an actual alien, who crash-landed on Earth and has been living at a government facility uh, ever since, and now he has escaped, and these guys are helping him uh, get back to his sort of mothership. And along the way, they pick up a lot of other funny characters. Kristen Wiig uh, has a great part. Jason Bateman's really funny in it. Uh, David Koechner has a really great role. Uh, they're being chased by these cops who are played by Bill Hader and Joe Latrulio. Uh, so just it's just wall-to-wall -wall funny actors, and everybody gets like a couple good little moments and asides and, and, and sort of has fun with the premise. Uh, Sigourney Weaver has a small role and is really great in it, uh, and it includes a sort of a little a little nod to... Uh, her background is Ripley. And so that's the sort of thing. I mean, if, if this stuff sounds like fun to you, uh, I see no reason you would not enjoy the film. I also want to say, I think a lot of the comedy actually works as well as it does because Paul the Alien, which is done with CG, is just remarkable. I mean, so expressive. Like, they've given him this face that's like a Pixar character. He's got huge eyes and he's got this incredibly expressive, almost cartoon-like face and it was such a good call because it makes him it makes it so much easier to get a gag out of him I mean, he can do many he can do so much in the way of like psych eggs i mean seth rogan does a good job as the voice but you almost don't need him because the character of paul is just designed so well that a lot of the jokes play even without dialogue there's one great moment where Paul is, like, posing as a statue and hoping not to be noticed while a cop is around. And it's sort of a play on E.T. And his son done so well because he's frozen in this ridiculous expression. It's exactly how, like, 
Chuck Jones would have done it in a Looney Tunes cartoon. So, uh, Paul, if you like, you know, this genre, if you like the other films from these guys, uh, I would definitely say go see it. Just a fun, silly, goofy, enjoyable road trip movie. It is almost pitch black. If I sit back on the screen, you can, like, barely even see me. So that is it for this episode of Lines TV. Thanks for tuning in and straining your eyeballs to see me. I promise I will turn the light on before I start next time. I didn't notice how uh, close to sunset it was. Thanks, everybody, for watching and subscribing. I will see you next time.